All right, what is up, everybody? How are we doing today? How is everything going? How is everyone doing? How is my audio sounding? How is how is everybody? So good to see everybody in here again. Nice to see you in here, John. Nice seeing you in here, Tambora Station. And welcome back to day two. Uh, here i actually have to do some travel unexpected travel this week uh so i'm gonna be out of pocket thursday friday saturday sunday um probably back on monday and i think i'm gonna try and do these live streams like tuesday wednesday thursday um i'll see if i can maybe sneak one in on monday as well uh but uh i don't really like waiting too long in between them uh yesterday when we finished yesterday i uh, was jonesing to get back on the system. I was like, man, I want to just keep going with this thing. Maybe the live stream should be longer uh, so that I can just like plow through this whole thing all at once. Uh, you know, it's an experiment. So we're going to we're gonna kind of see what happens as we go through. Uh, good until, Josh, is good until I found out nobody made coffee again. Yeah, that's, uh, I fortunately was able to get my morning coffee going. So I'm feeling pretty good today. So, wow, look at that lens flare coming off of that red guitar there. That looks amazing. That was not intentional, uh, but it looks really cool. I just noticed it when I looked over at my second computer here. Uh, so, yeah, epic indeed. So, <clears throat> that, uh, that you can see is the, uh, is the bass guitar, and you can see it's a little um, taken apart. Right, it's a little taken apart. Um, so let's take a look here at what I did with this thing. Um, let me see if I can bring this up in not in VLC so that we don't lose the the music. We're gonna actually opt to use Windows Media Player <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of VLC. I'm sure no one's ever made this uh, suggestion, this 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 decision before. Let's see. I just don't want it to hijack all my file associations. Looks like I'm okay. So here you can see uh, a video that I made this morning. Uh, or, yeah, this morning. I think it was this morning, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to uh, capture just and share with you guys just a little bit of what goes on in the disassembly of this thing. And definitely the most important thing here in this video is going to be these boxes right here. So this box and this box are parts boxes. And whenever you're taking something apart that has a lot of small components, uh, like this bass guitar, you want to make sure that you have a good system in place to take care of everything. Uh, all this stuff is going to also then go into a bigger tub with a lid. Uh, and that way, if it inevitably gets knocked over, I don't end up losing all of my parts. So uh, the neck here is under tension from the strings, just like a bow and arrow. And uh, what you can see is the uh, uh, removal of those strings is going to release, release that tension. Uh, just be careful when you're doing this. Like one thing that I'll do, you'll notice here when I go to release it. First, I'll play the note and then I'll start loosening it. Uh, this has this bass has what's called side by side tuners, uh, so two tuners on each side of the headstock. So that means that they turn in two different directions for uh, tightening and loosening. And you just don't want to over tighten a string. Um, these strings are the bass strings are always wound, uh, so it's like a, a a coil that runs up the entire length of an interior core. Uh, so when they snap, it's it's annoying and you know it's it costs money because you have to replace the string but it's not really um a safety hazard but with guitar strings particularly the higher uh two or three strings it's just basically one uh steel band and if you if you pop that uh, if you over tighten it to the point where you actually break the string it can fly off and and i know guitar players who have gotten whacked in the face uh, by having that happen it doesn't really happen when you do a bass guitar string but it could happen with a guitar string so just a little insider knowledge there um, then up at the top of the, the base, so there you can see I, I took some of the screws uh, out of this little cover plate here, this little triangular cover plate. So that triangular cover plate is for what's called the truss rod. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit today, but basically what happens is uh, running down the entire length of the neck, there's a... a uh, it's essentially a bolt that's threaded at, at both ends. Um, and so in the case of this base, there's a hex uh, drive up top here, uh, like a socket head, like a, almost like a socket head cap screw, the top of the socket head cap screw. And you go in there with an Allen key and you can tighten or loosen the tension on the neck. And what that does is it makes the neck curve 
or it makes it loosen when it's under the tension of the strings. Um, and that's an important bit of functionality when you're setting up a guitar. Uh, so it's not just a solid, you know, wood neck. There's, it, it starts out as a, you know, this, in the case of this guitar, it's probably a maple neck. It starts out as a solid piece of maple, but then there is a, a, a cavity that is bored through here with a router. And then inside of that cavity, you place the, um, the truss rod and then uh, after you have that, a lot, you know, there's different techniques you'll use. You'll refill that cavity with another piece of wood, or so, on some of them, it's just a hole that's bored all the way through. Usually, it's a cavity that's milled out, especially on a cheaper guitar like this one. Uh, but there's a cavity that's milled out. There's a, a threaded rod that goes all the way through the entire length of the neck, and then uh, the that cavity is filled, and then the whole thing is covered with a second piece of wood. So the lower part of the neck is made out of maple. The upper part of the neck here, this is called the uh, the fret board. That's usually a second piece of wood um, in this case it looks like it's a rose wood so just a little bit of anatomy of what's going on inside of a guitar any guitar uh, bass guitar or electric guitar um, it almost certainly will have this this thing it's called a truss rod uh, it can be tightened it can be loosened it can be over tightened this is a very common way that people will ruin their guitar is they will over tighten it and they'll actually snap the bolt um, or they'll strip it in some way and then the truss rod no longer engages and uh, it can ruin a guitar uh, or require a replacement neck or require um, a replacement truss rod. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that can they can go into it. Uh, so, you know, you want to be careful if you ever find yourself in a spot where you're trying to adjust that truss rod. Sometimes the truss rod can also get adjusted from down here. My hand is in the way uh, in this footage, but sometimes the truss rod gets adjusted down here. So the truss rod goes up the neck, and there's nothing up at the very top uh, where the uh, the headstock is, and instead you adjust it down here. Sometimes it's like a traditional Phillips head. Uh, those are a real pain. Sometimes you have to take the entire neck off in order to adjust the truss rod. That's a real pain also because the thing's under tension from the strings, and that's how you have to set the, the truss rod itself. So if you have to take the whole thing apart, take the neck off, set it, you know, turn it basically like a quarter of a turn, it's not much, and then put the whole thing together again, restring it up, and then wait, you have to wait like, you know, a, a bit of time because it actually has to set and the tension has to like really pull it in. Uh, you know, it can be it can be very frustrating when when you have a truss rod like that. So, um, you know, putting these different components in their different compartments so that I can reassemble this thing later, uh, continuing to take this apart. Let's see what else we did. We flipped this over. Uh, there's a electronics cavity on the back of this. So the um, I'm not sure what type of wood the body of this thing is. The neck is maple. You can see the maple there. The body's probably like a, an ash wood or a bass wood. Uh, base wood would be appropriate, right? If it was base. Um, I'm not really sure what type of wood the body is on this thing. I never really dove that deep into it. Uh, but you can see here it's all one you know, wood, wooden piece, or like we talked about yesterday, it's probably three pieces uh, merged together. And, uh, and then you can see that there's an electronics cavity, so a little you know, plastic D-shaped cover. Uh, and uh, just uncovering that just so that we can kind of see what's going on, and then removing the four screws from the back of the base so that ultimately I can get the neck off of this thing. So that's what I'm doing here, just removing these four screws. What's up, Raul? Welcome, welcome. A little discussion in the chat about the, uh, uh, you know, whether or not to extrude the body. Uh, isn't loft viable approach, especially when there's a bevel that varies in size? I mean, that bevel, I'm going to just, you know, so I'm reading this question here from the Emerger. Uh, I was surprised yesterday when you extruded the body of the base. Uh, isn't a loft a viable approach, especially with that bevel uh, that varies in size? So... You know, with regards to, let's say, for example, this bevel here, I think what I'm going to do with that is I am going to do some kind of a loft or a sweep to cut that away. Uh, but I think that, you know, first what I would do is create the entire extrusion all as one shape, and then I'll be able to kind of shape that away using, like I said, you know, certainly using two guide curves, probably a split line as guide curves, and then I'll split that away as like a variable chamfer. Uh, so yeah, that's a, a good point. Um, and it just depends on the geometry. Like if you ever look at Paul Reed Smith guitars, they, they have a very pronounced curve across the top. And so, you know, to create a, a body like that, you might take a different approach. You might, you know, you might still extrude it all as one uniform thickness, and then you might use like a surface design and then a surface cut to cut that top off. Uh, it just depends on the guitar, uh, how much curvature it has on the top. Most guitars are, uh, when it comes to the body, the body is pretty flat and sometimes it just has a little bit of shaping to it uh, that you might do uh, in manufacturing uh, to kind of give it a little bit of curvature to the top. But for the most part, they start out as a uniform uh, thickness and then you kind of shape it from there. So great, great question. 
So just removing these screws, uh, once I get these screws removed, you can see here that uh, I'm able to remove the neck. You can see that the, ne the very bottom of the neck, see this is something that I definitely wanted to capture. Uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that we get this into the stream today. But at the bottom of the neck here, uh, when I remove this, you can see that it's got this it's got a curve to it. So it doesn't just come down and stop flat. It's got a curve to it at the bottom of the neck. And we're going to see that same curve in the pocket. Uh, so in the, in the pocket when we look at the body. So we wanted to make sure that we got that all out. There you can see that same curve in the pocket of the body. So this comes down here like so. And then it has that curve and back around like so. So we want to make sure that we capture that. We want to get the screw location in our master layout sketch so we can make sure that those screws line up on both components. It's one of the benefits of the master layout approach. When you have uh, components that merge together, we can make sure that they, they line up properly. Uh, we can see here that the... Um, the headstock of this thing, the, the top part of the neck, uh, still has some... Uh, tuning machines in it, machine heads or tuning machines in it up top here. So I also went through and removed them. Uh, let's see here, open with. Once again, Windows Media Player getting some, some action. And a all black screen. That's great. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Okay, there we go. It wasn't Windows Media Player. Wasn't sure if it was going to be able to handle that uh, that request. It was a big request to play some uh, play some video. So uh, yeah, so you can see here in the case of the every time you get a, a machine a tuning head, you know they're going to be a little bit different. I call them machining heads. Sometimes people call them tuning pegs or tuning heads. A lot of different names for these things. I just call them machine heads. Uh, but every time it's going to be a little different. In the case of this one, it's a sleeve that's threaded down into the lower part of the post. So that, that sleeve goes through the headstock, aligns the, the tuning peg uh, inside of the headstock. And so you can see it's got a sleeve and a washer. And then there's a single, very small Phillips head screw in the back. So just take that Phillips head screw off and, uh, and then the whole thing comes out. And once again, uh, you want to make sure that you are being strategic as far as how you organize these parts as you're taking apart this thing you know this obviously this is not just for a guitar but any assembly uh, when you've got a lot of different components you know take five minutes before you get started go around and collect some tupperware containers so you can put the you know different parts of different sub assemblies into the same container so you'll be able to reassemble that whole thing later so, um, you know, all the parts that belong to one tuning peg are going into one of these little bins in my six pack. Uh, and then the tuning peg itself just went into this kind of general purpose. There are two sets of identical parts, two left and two right uh, identical parts otherwise. So that's pretty much it uh, for the uh, little show and tell there of what we did to get ready for today. Uh, what that left us with is the base body that you see behind us with that, that real shine to it. And it also left us with this the the uh, neck and headstock you can see the two different types of wood so the majority of the neck is this this nice maple and then you can see here that the uh, fretboard is made out of uh, a rosewood rosewood fretboard you know this is an assembly there's a lot going on in this this one piece you might buy this as one piece as like a neck uh, but there's a lot going on in this one piece you've got this uh, plastic part up at the top here called the nut that's where the strings run through, so that's one component. You've got the main maple neck. You've got the fretboard, which is made of a, uh, a rosewood. You've got the um, uh, inlays here that are uh, made out of, uh, you know, these probably aren't actual mother of pearl, but they're, you know, we'll just call it, we'll just say they're pearl. We've got these pearl inlays here. That's another component uh, that changes sizes as you go down the neck. The, the holes get a little bit larger. At least on most guitars they do. These actually look like they're pretty uniform. Um, and then you've got the truss rod that we talked about. And the truss rod itself is actually an assembly as well. You can actually see the, the hex head there. If I look in there, the truss rod. That's what you can use to adjust the tension on the neck. So, and you can see that the uh, headstock actually uh, kind of hangs out a little bit over the neck when we get down to the body section. So, this is good. You know, this is good that we've got this now. We can take some measurements on this thing. We've got it here just sitting on the bench. So, we'll be able to, to continue to refine uh, the design that we worked with yesterday. So, if we uh, jump into SolidWorks here, you can see that inside of SolidWorks, uh, over on the right, I've got my File Explorer up. This is something that's often neglected in the world of SolidWorks, but this is a, a great way to organize your files because you can just go into this folder and drag and drop whatever you need into your SolidWorks environment. So, when you set up favorites in here, like on your desktop, you set up quick access, uh, you're going to be able just to drag and drop from that 
that section of your SolidWorks interface right into the SolidWorks environment. So if you had a folder here with like your standard uh, parts, you know, you could do that in, in your uh, design library as well, but you can also just do it right here in Windows Explorer and just drag and drop. You have like a, a little shortcut directly to Windows Explorer right from there. So like I said, often overlooked, underutilized functionality in SolidWorks. And so this is what we did yesterday. We took some pictures of the bass guitar uh, and we used those pictures to create our master model layout sketch. So our master model layout sketch part, our master model layout sketch was, uh, it, it essentially looks like this. So we had our, you know, our dimensions that we were able to clearly define our 1.625 and our, uh, the, you know, the overall string length here, uh, or really it's the length from the top of the nut down to the uh, bottom of the bridge. Uh, just something that was very easy for us to to uh, to see. One thing that's kind of interesting here is that you'll notice that under units, I've got my unit set to uh, one, two, three. But you'll notice that when I was looking at those dimensions, uh, I'm only seeing two place precision. Only seeing two place precision. So why is that? So this is something kind of interesting that uh, I ran into when I was doing tech support a long time ago. And what it is, is uh, when we are working in SolidWorks and we are looking at our document properties. So I'm looking over here in SolidWorks, I'm looking at my document properties. And I go down in my document properties to dimensions. You'll notice that there's a precision on the dimensions here of 0 0.12. And when I go down to my units, you'll notice there's a precision on the units here of 0.123. So it's kind of like your mass properties type units. Uh, when you maybe when you do evaluate, you would get one, two, three. You get three places, but when you're actually creating dimensions, you only get two. The reason that I say this is interesting is because there is kind of a weird dependency between these two options. So, for example, if I uh, go down to the bottom here and I hit OK, and then I go. Uh, so now you see we're at our three places, and then I go back up to my options, and I go to document properties. So you'll notice here dimensions is set to one, two, three. Units is set to one, two, three. Now I'm going to set my units to uh, one, two. So two place precision, and then I'm going to go back to dimensions. Look at that; it automatically changed to dot one two. So there is this like weird almost like a one-way relationship uh, between the precision that you set under units and the precision that you set for how your dimensions are going to display. So I go down here to units and I set this back to one, two, three. Let's go back to dimensions. Look, it's still set to one, two. What is that all about? So like there's something in there that triggers it. Um, I don't know if it's because when I changed it from uh, two to three, I was going to, uh, you know, something that's outside of what's considered the, the dimension standard. And then when I change it back, uh, it, you know, it, it, uh, it returned, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really weird thing that happens in SolidWorks and definitely something to look out for. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Tampa Roar station. I guess maybe you've run into that before too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. Uh, how there's like this kind of like pseudo linking between the two, but it's, it doesn't always happen. So it's just kind of something to look out for. Make sure you look for it in units. Make sure you also look for it in dimensions. So we created this master model layout and then we went into our assembly and then in our assembly we inserted a new component and this component here was called a uh, red base body and the first feature that we created on this new component was a sketch where we converted the sketch from our master model layout so a lot of times when i do that i might i might call this um base body sketch and then i'll put something like converted uh, just so that, you know, I'm just leaving myself a little note here in the tree so that I know that that's coming from, and then this would be like the main base body. Now, one thing happened yesterday when we were creating this feature uh, that, that surprised me uh, or caught me off guard a little bit, and that is that the units in this model came in in millimeters instead of inches. So why did that happen? You know, what we talked about yesterday was we can create a new set of templates. So we created a new set of templates here called 2022 Red Bass Guitar Giveaway Templates. We got our part inch, we got our assembly inch. But then when I did insert component new part, uh, I didn't end up <clears throat> I didn't end up with that desired template. I didn't end up with this part inch template. In the part inch template, you can see here that I've got drawn by, drawn date, and the YouTube project that this is a part of. In the um, new part that I created, I don't have any of those properties. So, <clears throat> so what happened exactly? Well, what happened was when I used the command insert component new part, insert component new part, SolidWorks needs to know what template I want to use for that new part. 
and I forgot to go into my doc system options and go down to default templates. So when you do this default template setting, so I'm in my system options here, default templates. When you do this default template setting, what it says here is these templates will be used for operations such as file import and mirror part where SolidWorks does not prompt for a template. Well, another place where that'll be used is if you do insert component new. So what I can do here is I can hit the dot, 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 and then I can say I want any of my new parts to use the red base giveaway template, and I want my new assemblies to use the red base giveaway template as well. So now I've got a little bit of a problem, right? Because this part here is not using the correct metadata. Well, here's another nice shortcut to know about in SolidWorks. I can go options, sorry, I can go uh, file properties, and then I can go pick this first one. Now I'm holding shift on my keyboard, and then I can pick this bottom one. So I can pick everything that's in between, and I can do a control C for copy, control and the letter C for copy. And then I can go to my, my part that has the incorrect metadata, and I can do a shift select. So pick the first one, hold shift, pick the last one, delete all of them, and then do a control V. And you can see that those properties from my template carried right in here. So this will be 12 slash, I, I made this yesterday, 13 slash 2022. And it's part of the red base giveaway project. And I am the person who drew it. And then the final thing that I would just need to do is go options, document properties, and then update my document properties. Um, another thing that you can do here is you can save your document properties off. So you could save your properties off from one file and then load them in from another file. So if you needed to do like a full copy from one part to another, that might be a way to do it. Um, or there's another little kind of cool trick that you can do too, uh, where you insert one part into another part. Uh, and and uh, use and then dissolve the part. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that you can bring that information over. But in this case, I'm just going to switch this to IPS, switch this to three, go to dimensions, make sure that that's set to three as well, and OK. And now I'm ready to save this part. And then uh, this is being managed through uh, my PDM system, the old school uh, workgroup PDM, uh, my favorite PDM system. So I'm going to now do a check in active document. I know that that's down below where my mouse cam is, but you can see here that SolidWorks sees that there was a change to this red base body. So now it's bumping this up to revision two. So now I've got two versions of that file in my history and I can always go back and uh, get that earlier version. So let's go to this, let's get rid of this. So one thing that I wish that I had uh, in in uh, the world of SolidWorks is a uh, a tool that I could use to capture the color from you know somewhere else on the screen. And SolidWorks actually added this, I think, in SolidWorks 2021. Uh, but if you're working with an earlier version of SolidWorks than SolidWorks 2021, then you're going to have to do this manually. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, we took apart the 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 base today. Uh, so when we were looking at the base yesterday, we showed that we took an image from the side. We took an image from the front. Well, now we have some additional images. Like we have this image here from the uh, uh, from the front of just the body, which is going to be very useful. We'll bring that in. We use the same technique we used yesterday to clean up the image, make sure it's oriented correctly. This is just going to help us further refine our design. Um, you can see that we brought an image of the neck from the side. And what we did with this image was we were really trying to uh, avoid perspective. We did end up with just a little bit of perspective up here. You can tell because you can see the uh, the side of the neck. But the rest of it, we did pretty good. You can't, you know, you can like just barely see the top of the, the fretboard. And it is curving up in that direction. So we did pretty good with that. You can't really see anything on the side wall down here of the uh, where there's a flat spot at the bottom of the neck. So we did pretty good with avoiding perspective and, and hopefully avoiding any kind of distortions that might come from that perspective. You can see we got another uh, image of the neck, just standalone image of the neck from behind. This is an image of the uh, headstock. Now the headstock on this thing is angled back a little bit. So we wanted to capture an image of it looking dead on so that we can use that uh, dead on image. Uh, so we're going to have a, you know, a plane on an angle and then we're going to use that dead on image to capture the, the size of that headstock. Uh, this is an image of the neck looking down and then finally there's another image of the entire base that's the original raw image. So if we take an image like this and we open it uh, with a photo editing piece of software like paint.net, 
Well, what we could do is we can extrapolate what the RGB value is of that uh, of that red. And the way that we would do this is we would use the color picker tool. So the color picker tool is a very common tool in a lot of different pieces of software. So we could do color picker. We could pick this red color here. And then in our uh, colors down here, we can see that that equates to 236, 52, 24. 236, 52, 24. So if you have any kind of a photo editing piece of software, you probably have access to a tool like this. Like I said, in SolidWorks uh, 2021, they actually added this functionality right into the software, which is uh, pretty darn nice. A little bit of functionality I wish that I had here today. Uh, but that's okay. Even though we don't have it, we can still uh, get ourselves pretty close with this uh, red color here. So what we could do is we could say that we want to go to our little beach ball here. And then uh, down at the bottom of the, uh, the color section, you have that same RGB functionality. So that's going to be our 236 by 52 by 24. So it was actually pretty close anyway. Uh, but that gives us that same red color uh, that was in that image. You know, it obviously is going to look a little different because it's not a uniform. Uh, it's not a uniform red color. We're, and also, I don't have real view on right now. So we're not getting all like the cool shining. And um, I actually, it's funny. I have a video out about uh, uh, how to get real view back if you lose it. And the way that you can get real view back in SolidWorks if you lose it is you can actually roll your driver back to an earlier uh, an earlier driver one that will work with real view uh, but I ran into a snag when I uh, got ready to start streaming where I updated my streaming software and because of its reliance on the graphics card it told me I also had to update uh, my graphics card driver and so when I did that I ended up losing my real view in SolidWorks so uh, the joys of having multiple pieces of software that need to talk to each other I will continue to try to figure it out and uh, you know for now there is a solution but unfortunately uh, that solution might mean that you, you you screw up other pieces of software and they stop being able to work so you know we'll we'll get there don't worry we'll get there eventually all right so let's now go back to our uh, master model so I'm using control tab here control tab is another really good shortcut to remember uh, in SolidWorks I'm using control tab here to control through these different uh, layouts and I'm gonna go to this layout here and I'm gonna add another fixture so that I can refine what's going on with uh, this base body and we'll get the neck in there as well we'll start working on uh, we'll probably start working on the neck a little bit today I think I think it's time to start working on that so um, what we can do here is we can maybe uh, go to our top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. And once we go tools, sketch tools, sketch picture, we're going to choose this body only front uh, JPEG. And we're going to bring that in and then drag it into place. We're going to turn off our enable sketch tool because if that's on, we're not going to be able to resize it using our little uh, grab handles here, our little... Our little yeah, grab handles. So we're going to just move this into place uh, relative to our original sketch, which was relative to our original image. And we're going to see, you know, how well this aligns. You know, did we get everything right? The the, the horns in the original design, I, I thought, looked a little off as well. Um, and again, you'll notice here that in the original design, uh, we we did not account for the fact that the neck the the neck pocket sticks up a little bit here. So we have to kind of account for all of those things. Um, we also kind of have to just make some uh, adjustments as we are working, as far as you know what's considered horizontal. Like I might consider the very top of the base here horizontal. So how did I do with the image? Did I get it in there? Uh, perfectly horizontal it's pretty close I could maybe adjust that image like one degree uh, just to give myself uh, a little bit more of a, a chance of having that thing be perfectly or maybe even like just a fraction of a degree so let's say we go like 0.2 see look that looks I think better um, as far as it being aligned to what we're considering horizontal these are you know when you're working with photos this is what you have to do and and it's very much an iterative process and you just keep trying to refine 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 until you get something you like and then uh, a lot of times you augment that with some 3d printing you do some 3d printing to uh, get the geometry to you know to, to look exactly the way that you were expecting it to look um, you also want to make sure that you're taking advantage of measurements and dimensions so you know this neck here is going to fit down into that pocket and it's going to fit down into that pocket uh, basically one for one there might be just like a touch of tolerance on there 
but uh, that looks like it's at about 2.42 inches. So the bottom of that pocket should measure at that same 2.42 inches. Um, I realize that the pocket is tapered, but uh, let me see if I can not drop this neck. Uh, so let's see if, if we can get the you know a measurement in there that looks good at 2.42 inches. So we'll go here. We could even just do this as like a rectangle. Um, I'll say that's five. We'll make it 2.42, and that's got to be at the bottom. And you know we don't really know exactly where this is, but this should be more or less centered. Um, so I'm gonna just drop a midpoint on here and drop that midpoint onto this center line here, and we'll just see you know how that looks with our image that we just added. So let's take a look at that image. So it looks like um, where we had the center of the neck is maybe a little bit off from where this image is dropping in. And, uh, you know, we might have to go back and look at the other image as well. Sometimes uh, this gets a little tricky where you've got multiple images laying on top of each other. You might go to the new, uh, the new image that we're working on here and adjust the transparency on that new image. This is... Um, you know, this is what the the process is like. It's it's an iterative process, and it's uh you know you, you just keep refining it until you feel like you got something that's usable. Um, again, we're working from images here. We have to ask ourselves like, what's the important uh, part of the design requirement for uh, for this actual design compared to. Um, you know, the artistic part of it. So like the shape of the bass guitar is more the artistic part of it. And then the actual design would be like how the components fit together and, and work in the real world. So uh, these are all things we have to look at. We have all things we have to think about. We can kind of see here with that overlay with the, the, tran the two transparencies on top of one another, we can kind of see, um, you know, how close we are to being aligned with this new image. Um, I think we're pretty close here, actually. You know, the the... The fact that that pocket is a little bit off center doesn't really worry me that much because the the width of that pocket does look correct. So I think I'm going to just keep this as is and move forward. But just to illustrate that, you'll notice here if I move this over, I mean that 2.42. Maybe it's just a, this image is just a smidge too big. Maybe make it just a little bit smaller. But uh, overall, I think that 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 pocket fits in there perfect. So. Let's drop this image on here like so. And let's say that we're going to uh, use this image as our uh, refinement image for the uh, for the uh, uh, remaining geometry of the the body itself. So we got a better image. You know, it's a, it's a higher quality image. It's from a better angle. You know, the first image that we took yesterday of the overall base kind of got us in the right direction. But now we need to do a little bit of refinement. And so we're going to get in there. We're going to edit that sketch. So let's add, let's drop that sketch down below here. Some of these other sketches, we just were using those as reference. I don't think we really need them anymore. So we can get rid of that one. That was just that line. We can get rid of that one, which was the rectangle. And then this one here is going to be called picture. And this is going to be base body only from top. And a lot of times I end up just putting all my pictures in one folder. Uh, just, you know, it just makes it easier to hide and show them and keep them always at the top so that when it comes to adjusting your sketch, you can make those adjustments a little easier. So we talked about this yesterday. Um, if, you, if, you, if you didn't watch the one yesterday, the uh, live stream yesterday, you can go back and take a look. Uh, we talked about how you can use splines effectively and how you can make these kind of adjustments without having to have the whole sketch go crazy. And... Um, you know, the big trick is you, you put your points in the peaks and the valleys, and you also uh, have less points. Don't go too crazy with your points, uh, because when you have too many points, that's when things really start to get wrinkly. Uh, you end up with a lot of wrinkles in your design. That's not, you know, typically not what you want. So just some slight adjustments here. Uh, this dimension, you can probably pull this back a little bit. Nope, oh, that was... Maybe a little too much. You could also maybe just make that driven and, and pull that into place. Question here. Do you know if it's possible to insert a part with reference images into another part? Uh, I mean, right, I haven't tried that. Is the When you're doing it, are you saying that the images don't come through? Um, I usually would just do it the way I'm doing it here, which is to create a, a part with the images, but then... Uh, capture the the valuable geometry from those images as sketch geometry and that way uh, you'll be able to just 
you know, whether you're doing it using the technique I'm showing here with the assembly or whether you're inserting one part into another, you'll be able to uh, see the sketch geometry. All right, here we go. Just subtle refinement here. I know that this is, you know, it's it's not necessary. Uh, you know, for, again, it's you have to kind of decide like what's important as far as functionality versus as far as artistic. But you know, I want this to look pretty close. And this is the kind of stuff that I would do if I was trying to get this to look close. Or you know, the other very common scenario that I do is I use photographs to uh, create geometry for three D printing. So if you're if you're uh, in that space, this is going to be important as well to get this as close as possible. All right, so now we get to this section here uh, that we we just kind of uh, fudged it in there yesterday. We weren't really sure what we were going to end up doing with this section. Um, I think that what I'll probably end up doing here is just doing it in two sketches because this transition here, you know, it, it can it can come inside of the uh, of the base here to get this transition to these uh, to these it's really what we would call the horn on a guitar so i think that's what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drop these points in here have them kind of come to the inside a little bit uh and then go back and uh, create additional geometry that's that's more on the outside so i'm going to create these points like so i think that looks pretty good and that's going to give me the main uh, the main shape of that base. But then right within that same sketch, you know, because this is a master uh, layout sketch, right within that same sketch, what I could do is I can create this additional geometry that's coming up and over the top and kind of give myself the geometry for this pocket, set myself up for later. Uh, this is going to be slightly tapered and that taper is going to be dependent on the neck. So I'm going to come back in and, and uh, work with the neck a little bit to get these exact angles. Uh, but we're going to we're going to just go through here and do a little bit of but it almost looks like an elliptical radius there. huh? I'm not sure if I want to go quite that that crazy with it right now. Kind of come back and reevaluate later. And this again, you know, like, like I've been talking about, it can be a, a combination of using your, you know, your eyes and the photo. And then you, you combine that with the use of uh, some measurements from a caliper and you'll, you'll find that you're able to get pretty darn close. And this section here that I'm creating right now, like I'm, I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse a little bit because I really want to be creating this geometry as the neck and then referencing the geometry here, maybe with a convert or maybe with an offset. So I'm not gonna go too crazy on this. I'm just gonna get it kind of close, but I'm not gonna go in and add dimensions or anything right now because uh, this this geometry is gonna ultimately be dependent on the uh, the geometry that comes from the neck itself. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll add this fillet radius here cause that's not gonna be dependent on the neck, but the rest of the geometry really is gonna be based on whatever the angle of the neck is coming down into this thing. Maybe this here, I'll take the center point and line it up with the overall center line of the design. See, it's interesting that that, it's really like the, it's weird that the neck isn't landing in line with the overall center line. So I'm not sure what to think of that right now. I think I'm gonna uh, back off of this sketch a little bit and get into the actual neck, neck part of this process. So for the neck, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing in another image. Uh, let's save this model as is. Let's go top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view. And we're going to go to um, tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. And we're going to bring in this neck only from the top. And when we took our, took our uh, original uh, measurements off of this thing, we were able to, I think, pretty accurately locate the size and the, the location of the nut, which is this uh, kind of plastic part up top here. So we're going to use that same location here to help size this image, and we'll see how everything falls into place. We're going to continue to uh, take some dimensions from this thing because now that we've got the neck off of this, we can really uh, get in and, and get some clear dimensions as far as, uh, you know, widths and angles and things like that at different spots along the neck. And that's going to help us uh, clearly define the angle running down the side walls of this neck, which will also help us to define the location of the neck uh, when it lands here in the uh, in the main body. 
So let's take a look here. Uh, one one dimension that we can grab right away would be the... Oh, shucks. Did the one thing I said I didn't want to do. You had one job, Toby. I ended up dropping the, uh, <laughs> ended up dropping the, the neck there. All right, so... Now what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, this dimension here at the very bottom of the neck to help us to size that image as well. So we'll take this dimension here, which is at two. We'll call that 2.45. And then we're also going to measure the length of or the distance from that that same dimension we just took up to the top of the nut. So that looks like about 22 and 9 sixteenths up to the top there. So we got 2.445. Yeah. 22 and 9 sixteenths. So we'll go top plane, begin a sketch. Here's kind of a cool thing you can do in SolidWorks. You can do, t uh, whoops, sorry, I'm not in SolidWorks. So we went top plane, begin a sketch, and then uh, kind of a cool thing we can do is we can type in 22 space 9 slash 16, and that'll uh, give us 22 and 9 sixteenths uh, for that distance. And then uh, we got our 2.45, and we'll make that midpoint. And then this will go right here at the origin, kind of calling that origin our uh, central location for this thing. And, you know, now basically what we've got is we've got the uh, location of, or, you know, what, what should be the location of the sidewalls for this neck so i can bring this down to here like so and that's you know that's really like our layout for sidewall for call that neck layout usually you want to put the name of the the main feature here uh, side angles and then right mouse button sketch color and we'll say we want this to be a color that pops that eh, orange is it's okay. <laughs> I wish it popped a little more, but that's okay. So now we can go back to our uh, original pictures. We don't really need to see them anymore. We don't need to see that body anymore. Um, we can go to this picture. Picture, neck only, top. And we can resize that based on that layout geometry that we just created. There we go. Get that over there and there we go and the bottom of the maple part of the neck has that kind of curve that we saw in the pocket but the uh wow look at that that's like perfect but the uh top part of the neck uh ends up uh, i'm sorry the uh, the the fretboard doesn't have that pocket so you can see the pocket underneath there that was in the body but that's not going to be in the fretboard itself so that's pretty good i mean that pretty much confirms what we uh, were expecting it looks like the nut gets a little thinner up at the top here maybe i'll just take that measurement one more time just to see if uh, uh if there's anything that's off there but you know again we're just using this to get us close we're going to use the actual measurements 1.625, once again, it's it's pretty consistent there at 1.625. So I think I, I would call that um, acceptable as far as our angle for the neck. And we can then, you know, be confident that we can use that uh, uh, layout geometry. You know, it's the layout that we're using, not so much the picture, to uh, continue to define the geometry of the neck when we, when we go into our individual part files and start creating the neck. So here's a picture for the neck only. I'm going to uh, drag that up in the tree so that it is uh, up here with all the other pictures so they're easy to hide and show all at the same time. And uh, now what we can do is we can take a look at this thing from the side. So what we want to imagine is when we're when we're creating this neck, you know, where is the point where things start to change? Where's the point where it starts to kind of angle down here? And I think it's fair to say that that point is right here at, at the bottom of the nut, right where the nut ends up getting glued onto the wood there. So, you know, the, the, the maple part of the neck comes up here straight, 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 and then it begins to angle down. Maybe this will make more sense if I hold it horizontally. So the maple part comes up straight, 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 and then it begins to angle down. Well, the, the location at which it begins to angle down, so it's like straight and then it begins to angle down, it's probably this point right here. I think it's fair to say it's that point right there. So that's where we're going to end up locating our... The, the neck 
uh, when we look at this thing from a side view. And what's going to help us with that is the fact that we have an image of this thing from the side view. So we could go right plane here, begin to sketch, orient our view. And we could uh, begin creating the geometry for that neck from the side view. We could say that the the fretboard here, you know, is going to be at one spot. The bottom of the neck itself is going to be at one spot. We can kind of gather that from this, although I don't know if I necessarily want to rely on that uh, arc there because that's just the arc that we took from the picture, and we said that we're going to ultimately define that from the neck. So let's, you know, let's just we'll, we'll drop it in there as kind of like a, a temporary. So I'll make that just kind of like a oh shucks, hold on a second, sorry guys, I never went back into SolidWorks. Let me start that whole little. Uh, explanation over again so if we go in here to our uh what we've been working on right we, we went in we added the orange there that represented the layout for the neck from the top and, and gave us those sidelines well now what we can do is we can kind of roll this thing around to the side and when we roll this thing around to the side here what we're going to say is that the um uh, right plane is where we're going to begin our sketch and we're going to create a line here on the right plane and we're going to create another line here on the right plane and we're going to create a line up here on the right plane and this first line is going to be hooked directly to this orange sketch so we'll use what's called pierce wherever that line is passing through the right plane it's going to pierce to this end point uh, this arc here is going to pierce this point here, but this line we're not so sure about. So we're going to make that for construction as a reminder. Like eh, It'll probably be close to this, but it's not necessarily going to be right on. Um, and then our uh, final line that we're going to reference here is going to be... Uh, let's see here. This point here is going to just hook right to the origin. And that's essentially going to be the pivot point of our design. So when we look at this thing from the right side view, it's going to, the neck is going to come up in this direction and then it's going to, you know, it's going to hit this point here and then it's going to pivot down. So it's going to be flat, 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 and then it's going to pivot down. Now I know in the real world it's actually arced uh, because of the string tension, but we're not going to worry about that right now as part of this design. We're just going to say it's flat, straight, and then it angles down when we get up to the headstock for this particular uh, base design. So um, are there any dimensions that we can capture off of this thing? Well, yeah, we can capture uh, what you know is, looks to be a pretty straight, flat area down here at the bottom of the fretboard. So at the peak of the fretboard uh, with its curvature, it looks like we have a thickness of about uh, 0.27 for the fretboard itself. And then we can also get a measurement here of the... Uh, actually, we can just use like a depth gauge approach here, right? So, whoops. So the thickness of the wood at that location is 0 0.82 inches. So what we could do is we could include that as part of this line here. We could say that that's going to be our 0 0.82. And that gives us a uh, X and Y for our picture when we bring in our sketch picture. So that's a pretty good start there. Um, it, you know, it gets thinner. It's got this like little bump here. So it's going to be harder to capture the thickness up at the top here. But uh, maybe we could up at the very uh, at the very peak here, we could get at least like kind of a ballpark. So it looks like it's closer to about 0 0.63. Uh, again, that's, you know, 0 0.61, 0 0.63. We don't want to necessarily be too uh, reliant on that, but maybe just to kind of get us in the ballpark, we'll at least drop it in there. 0 0.63. Three, and that's just of maple. That's not including any of the uh, the fret. The fretboard is entirely above this line. So let's say that that's. Wait, is that right? No, that's not right. Because the. Wait a second. I think I'm screwing something up here, guys. That's not right because the body it sits down below the neck. So I have to see what this thing is when it sits in the body. Stand by one moment. This is the the plane that I should have been referencing because it sits down in the body here. And that is approximately, let's call that 0 0.1875. So it sits above the body uh, 0 0.1875. We got to make sure we include that. This 
this is the risk of taking this thing apart. You know, anytime you're reverse engineering something, you just got to keep uh, keep your head on straight, keep thinking about what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so this is going to be 0 0.1875. That's uh, the gap to the body. Then this is going to come all the way down to here. And then this 0 0.63 is actually going to be to there. 0 0.63. So that was just, I clicked on the dimension and then I grabbed the dimension grip. So grab the dimension grip here and then dragged it up to here. So then that's going to be 0 0.82. That's going to be 0 0.82. There we go. So just clicked on the dimension grip and reassigned it. Always good to know that you can do that. Okay, that gives us our layout for neck. Neck layout for thickness. Call it that. All right, and sketch color. And because this is also part of the neck uh, geometry, I'm going to make this a different shade of orange. This is another technique that I use is for all the, all the sketches that have to do with the neck, I'm just going to go through this whole column here. For all the sketches that have to do with the body, I'll go through this whole column here. For all the sketches that have to do with you know, the fretboard, maybe I'll go through this whole column, you know, whatever. Uh, so everything that has to do with one area of the design, I just kind of use one column of colors so that it's easy for me to uh, associate that orange tan color with the neck. Anything, anytime I see orange tan, I know that's a layout that I created as part of the neck. So now we're on the right plane again. Right plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, tools, sketch tools, sketch color. Nope, sketch picture. And then we're going to add the neck only side view. And there it is. It looks beautiful. Uh, we're going to say that's going to be at negative 90. We're going to turn off the scale tool. And we are going to grab the corner of this thing and resize it until we have the correct thickness. Which we're actually looking pretty close there. Okay, so there's our uh, you know thickness in one direction, and then let's get up to this end. Wow, look how close we ended up! Wow, 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 that's pretty darn close. So maybe just make it a smidge longer, and I think that's uh, totally acceptable. I could even go a little bit shorter there. So that's great. You know, these are this is a good uh, indication that the the images that we took are not overly distorting. And uh, when you have images that are not overly distorting, it just makes it makes you a little more confident in your ability to trust those images and you know work with them for the rest of the 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 project. So this is all good. Just want to kind of catch that right at that peak there. Thank you, Tambor Station. Glad you liked that one. That's a Too Tall Toby original. I'm sure somebody else has done it as well, but that one just came out of my brain. All right. So, and then with this picture, as always, I like to go full image and just dial down the transparency just a little bit. Uh, it'll allow you to see through, see through the geometry. So now we can do a switcheroo here. We can call this one picture neck uh, thickness, and we can drag this up so that it's up here with all the other pictures. And then we can do uh, for the neck layout for thickness, we can do... Uh, an edit sketch here. Oh, crud. I, I messed up something here. This solid line is the line at the fretboard. Because we knew where that was. And then the other one is the, the one that like, eh, it might be correct, it might not be correct. I got so excited about that. Let's see how how far off we are. Uh, not not quite as exciting uh, now that we're using that one. It's still pretty exciting. Maybe let's see what happens. I move this one up to here. It still looks pretty close for thickness there. How are we doing here? Ah, it's still all right. I'm back to being excited again. All right, cool. Yeah, that's good. That'll that'll work. That'll definitely work. So, you know, and like I said, this line I'm not as worried about this line because this was like our. Uh, uh, we think it's probably going to be close, but it's not. Uh, it's not anything that we were super worried about. Okay, cool. So now, uh, now we can do the switcheroo. So we put the picture up here, and uh, we can do our uh, thickness neck neck layout for thickness on the same sketch here. We can incorporate this angle that we're going to use for our um, new plane that we end up creating. 
We can come across here perpendicular. We can see what that uh, thickness measures at. Looks like 0 0.61. And then we can come back up this way, uh, staying, you know, essentially staying parallel. Um, it's kind of nice that in doing so, if I make this driven uh, and that, you know, merges directly to that other point, you know, it, it ends up being that correct dimension. So uh, I think that's, you know, these are all good indications that we are on the right track with our measurements here. Uh, we'll just kind of drop this one in at whatever it is. And then we can also get in here and drop in our angle dimension. And that should fully define that thing. So we'll say this is... Uh, we can just make it 14. We'll probably make it 15. Just have something that's a little bit more round. Ah, I don't like that. 14. There we go. I like that 14. Okay, so now we have our 14 uh, degrees up top. I doubt that it's 14. I'd be willing to bet that it actually is supposed to be 15. But the cool thing is that when we're using our layouts the way we are, if we decided to go back, if the customer came back and said, you know, hey, uh, I think you should, you know, I think it should be 15 instead of 14. Well, it's no big deal. We can, you know, we can make that change and it, everything downstream will update. So now uh, the final little piece of this puzzle is to create a plane at that location and then to use that plane uh, to drop in our headstock and to lay out the geometry for that headstock. So let's go to our, uh, there's a couple of ways that we could do this. Um, we could do it with a surface. We could do it with a plane. So th there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. I think because I have this line here, I'm just going to do it with a plane because it's so easy to create a plane now. So S key reference geometry plane, and that's going to be perpendicular to this uh, line at the end point. That gives us an exact plane for our headstock. So this would be called headstock plane. And now that we've got that headstock plane, we can now uh, create the the sketch for that headstock because we know uh, we basically know where that picture is supposed to be. I mean, again, we can take some you know some basic dimensions here to to kind of set ourselves up for a little bit more success. So in the case of this, it's going to be that the headstock is about 2.29 at the uh, at the tip. So you know that gives us a good a good start. Let's see if we can not drop the heads the uh, the base again. This base I bought used, and it looks like it's been through um, a, a couple of shows, we'll say. So uh, I think me dropping it earlier will not be too too detrimental, but I never... These guys are like my babies, so I never really want to hurt them. All right, and then we've got uh, another, you know, another line here, which is going to be at the peak of those uh, where the, this thing kind of flares out. So we'll call this... Uh, measure this peak here. Whoops, measure this peak here. And we'll call this one 3.22. 3.22 at that peak, so 3.22. And I always drop, you guys might notice, I, I often drop points here instead of uh, just doing a select midpoint when I'm uh, hooking this onto another entity. This is just something that I do. I just like having an explicit point there. It just helps me when I look at this thing later. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying that's what I do. Um, and then I'll use the image here to kind of figure out approximately where that point is supposed to be. And then, as we know, the uh, the the nut has a width up here, which is going to define the look the uh, size of that sketch at that location. So let's go to headstock plane again. We can make this plane a little bit bigger, make it kind of easy to read here when it's off in space. So like the plane, begin a sketch tools, sketch tools, uh, sketch picture, and then we are going to go to headstock only. So this image here of the headstock. And we're going to do a little bit of rinse and repeat. So we're going to say don't enable the sketch tool. And we're going to get normal to this sketch. Go on that side. So now we're kind of looking down at an angle. And we're going to resize this to fit that image we created. Or I'm sorry, the, uh, the sketch geometry we created. Which I forgot to recolor. So now you're seeing the downside of having a gray sketch geometry and trying to fit to that. Not good, not good. All right. Getting a lot closer here. Okay. That looks pretty good. 
that width there looks like it's maybe a little off. Um, in this scenario, uh, this might be a scenario where I would say I probably took the picture at a bad angle and I would stretch it. I'm not talking about this line here. This line I'm not worried about because I just kind of eyeballed that up. Like the, the width of this is important and it looks like it's pretty close. But I'm more concerned about this area here. Uh, the nut, you know, where this is lining up to the nut, it should be pretty much right here at the nut. So I think what I would do in this scenario is I would be comfortable uh, unchecking this option for lock aspect ratio because I would say, you know what, when I took this picture, I probably didn't get it quite dead on. Like these holes here look pretty good. You can't really see the side wall of the hole, but this one you can really see the side wall of the hole. And so that's letting me know, like, I didn't take the picture at a good angle. Sometimes I'll use, a, you know, a scanner, uh, like a, a 2D scanner, uh, and just drop the thing on the scanner and then take the image from there. But, uh, you know, these are all indications that maybe I'm a little bit off. I mean, maybe my, it was just my size, my width was off a little bit, like that helped. But in these scenarios, if you, or if you ever find yourself in the spot, you could always uncheck lock aspect ratio and then just stretch the thing a little bit. And that the reason you're okay with stretching that is because you're compensating for the uh, deformation that occurred when you took the picture at a bad angle. So you're just, you know, the distortion that you took at the bad angle, you're just kind of compensating for that in uh, resizing this thing. I mean, again, what we're talking about here is uh, uh, a headstock of a guitar. We're not talking about making, uh, you know, medical devices that go into your heart. So you, you probably are going to have a lot more leeway in this scenario than you might have in another scenario. But I do feel a lot better about that. I feel like that kind of got us uh, closer to what we were hoping for. It kind of also resolved that issue with that line being in the wrong spot, which, you know, whenever those things happen, I just think to myself, okay, that, that that's probably, probably means I'm on the right track. All right, what's up, Tank? Tank in the chat, like that tip. Yep, that's good. Yeah, if you ever take the picture at the wrong angle, that'll that'll help you out. So I felt like yesterday when we stopped, uh, we stopped an hour in. I felt like I was a little bit uh, under satisfied. So I'm gonna go for another 15, 20 minutes here. Uh, we'll break like maybe 10 minutes before the hour. I'm actually gonna end up catching a plane a little bit later today, uh, going on some unexpected travel. Uh, so um, you know. I know we all got lots of stuff to do, but I got to tell you, yesterday after we finished, uh, I felt, like I said, I felt undersatisfied. Felt like I could have kept going for another hour, two hours, three hours. Um, I'm learning as I go through this. I really like this format of just kind of like over the shoulder of a SolidWorks expert. So I'm going to um, continue to refine. Maybe the next project I'll just do all in one setting. Uh, and we'll just see how many people end up joining the stream before we're done. But uh, but for now, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna go for another uh, 15 20 minutes, uh, and then we'll we'll call it at that point. So so let's get this headstock drawn in here. Um, so now this is gonna be renamed to picture picture, and this will be called uh, headstock only. And then this is gonna be headstock. Uh, layout of overall. I don't know what to call it. Layout. I'll just call it layout from normal. There we go. That's good. Layout from normal. So let's save this. Um, as always, it's a good idea to uh, remember to check in your geometry, check into the vault. So uh, check in active document here. This is now on revision four. Check in. It's kind of cool when you have a uh, when you have a data management system. Every version that you checked in is available from that data management. Oh, shucks. What am I doing here? Go back in this one. Every version of your data management system, uh, every version of your file is uh, available in that data management system. So we would at any point be able to go back to the earlier versions. You know, this was the version where we just that we just stopped with yesterday. And then we'd be able to move forward into this new version that we just created that has that additional uh, headstock geometry and all the headstock photos and stuff. Though they didn't render through. <laughs> I wonder if it only renders through when there's solid geometry. We'll find out. What's up, 3167? How you doing? Welcome. Welcome, old friend of the show. All right, so now that we reordered that, uh, just like we did last time, let's get in here and start making some uh, dimensional, adding some dimensional information to this. So, or actually additional sketch geometry as well. So from here to here, um, you know, this is showing here at 5.125. I mean, that's something that we can actually measure with the caliper. Uh, we could just see if that's, you know, five point, what was that saying? 5.125. Let's see if it's close to that. So we could just take this guy and just measure it and see. 
Yeah, it looks pretty close. 5.125. I think I'm going to give that a pass. Yeah, I mean, that's it's maybe just like a little bit higher than that. Uh, maybe closer to like 5. Point, like 5.05, uh, but I mean, it's pretty close. Um, pretty close to what we got there. And then what we would do is we would just use lines, arcs, you know, splines. You can use any geometry you want. I probably would use a spline here. It looks almost like it even comes in a little bit. And again, you might be making your own. You, you might be using this bass guitar to come up with your own bass guitar, uh, whether it's for manufacturing or whether it's for, um, you know, just for like 3D printing, just for maybe even just having a project around that, that you can work on. So, you know, it's going to be up to you to decide how you want to... Um, you know, make make adjustments based on the image compared to your actual sketch geometry. But in this case, you can see here that, uh, you know, that looks pretty close. It's definitely going to get me into the ballpark, get me what I need or get me close to what I need there for that one. So then I could do the same thing here. I could uh, create a set of geometry that comes down and touches off on this uh, on that plastic nut that is at the very top of the bass guitar. Something like this where I'm kind of trying to trace the existing geometry or just get close to it. Uh, I could create a center line here. It comes down to the origin, and then I could mirror that geometry across the center line to give me that same geometry on both sides. And um, the only thing I don't know about that approach is whether or not these are linked. Let me just see here. I'm just curious. Oh, cool. They are. Okay. I wasn't sure if the spline handles uh, were linked dynamically, uh, but they are. So that's excellent. And then what we could do is we could get in here and create these holes. So again, we could use a caliper here to make sure that the holes are the correct size. Uh, we can use the, you know, the photo to locate those holes. I can't tell you how much time I've saved uh, just by using this approach of, you know, you're, you're creating something that's a little bit on the complicated side, and you're able to use uh, a photo to get the location of the holes. And then a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll just 3D print. You know, I'll, I'll create that geometry, and then I'll 3D print it to see if you know, see how close I got. Uh, just create like a little plug that goes into all four holes. Do I get it close? Am I off a little bit? Do I got to make an adjustment? You know, it's a good, uh, great technique to use where you, you start out with a photo, use that photo, then you, you use 3D printing to create a little jig, a little template, um, and then drop that template in uh, to see if you got everything correct. So these are at 0 0.55. We'll make all four of them equal. And then we can... Um, you know, as far as the center to center distance here, like this is showing up here at one inch. Well, what is the tangent to tangent distance after I drop in that one inch? It's 0 0.45. So that's a that's a dimension that I could take off of the physical model uh, by using a caliper. And it's coming out at point. Looks like it's coming out at closer to like 0 0.50. So uh, I could just, you know, adjust that center to center distance uh, by a little bit. Add 50 thou, and there we go. We got our uh, driven dimension here at 0 0.50 for the, the tangent to tangent distance between. That's another little trick that you can use. I mean, you could also just measure it tangent to tangent and then, you know, and then measure it off your caliper. But if you want to use the picture here, uh, so that's just for sake of consistency, let's say you make that 1.55. Uh, that looks good. Actually, maybe a little bit more. This is probably manufactured in uh, Japan. So it's probably it's almost certainly uh, not in English units anyway. So I don't know why I'm trying to uh, hit those so perfectly, but but I am. It's just how I roll. Okay, we can make this one two point five. Okay, that's you know again we're we're working from an image here. We're trying to get close. Okay, I think that's good. I think I'm gonna be happy with that. So there we go. Now we've got our geometry for the headstock, right mouse button, sketch color. And we're going to say that we want this sketch color to be, uh, again, in that kind of orange space uh, to help us when it comes to creating the actual part uh, that represents that neck. So we've got our side geometry here looking pretty good. We've got our uh, headstock geometry looking pretty good. You know, when it comes to the side geometry, we're going to have to do some shaping for that. We're going to get in. We're going to do some sweeping, some lofting. Uh, we're going to be doing some cool stuff to get that to uh, look the way that we want it. And I don't know if we're going to do that all as part of... I mean, this is, you know, this is pretty smooth running down through here. And then it kind of like 
fans out. I might do it almost as like a manufacturing approach where I start out with this uh, essentially like a piece of bar stock here and then uh, you bring the bar stock all the way up and then I'll end up shaping that off with a probably some kind of a surfacing command to, to shape that off. So let's let's figure we're going to start with that approach. We'll see how it works out and then we'll we'll double back if we need to change it up a little bit when we uh, you know when we get to that uh, those next steps. Now, the neck is going to be a sub-assembly. There's a lot going on in the neck. I'll probably make the neck a sub-assembly and the body a sub-assembly. But for now, I'm just going to make the neck one part, and then later on, we'll do form new sub-assembly here. So let's control tab into our uh, top-level assembly. Here's our top-level assembly with our layout sketches. We're going to do uh, tools, options. We're going to make sure that our default template is correct. I know we set this earlier, but just as a reminder, we got our default template set to the correct template. And then we're going to do insert component new part. Now, this is something that we talked about yesterday during the live stream. We beat this up a lot. So we go insert component new part. And when we go insert component new part, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, that this new part is going to be called RBG dash. Uh, let's call this one 201 since it's the neck. It's going to be part of the neck uh, sub assembly. So we'll call this one RGB 201. And this will be called neck I don't know what to call it. Main. I'll just call it neck uh, maple main. This is like the main part of the neck. Maybe I'll, I should call it neck and headstock. Maple main. That's good. Okay. So that's a good name. It's as good a name as any. <laughs> so we're going to save that. And now we get this little mouse with the green check mark. This is, if you remember from yesterday, we always pick the front plane whenever you get this mouse with the little check mark we always pick the front plane so we come over here to the assembly the front plane of the overall assembly we always pick right here it's at the top of the tree history sensors annotations front plane we always pick here and that's going to put us into a new sketch on the front plane of this new part uh, and that's not necessarily where we want to be sketching but uh, what it will also do is it will set us up so that our um, front top and right plane of the new part are exactly in line with the front top and right plane of the assembly that's the important part of what we did there so we go to the uh, exit sketch command we don't want to be in a sketch on the front plane necessarily um, we're going to go to the s key reference geometry plane we're going to pick the uh, from the master layout we're going to pick the plane for the headstock and we're going to say we want that to be offset at zero and so that's going to give us the headstock plane just kind of bring it right in. Maybe I do headstock plane uh, dash converted. I mean, most stuff is converted. I probably don't need to actually include that note on every little thing, but all right. So there's the headstock plane. And so now what we could do is we could maybe even just create the headstock. So select that plane, begin a sketch, right mouse button, select chain. We could do uh, convert entities. We could take this line and bring it across here. And then we can do an extrusion and we can take that extrusion and go up to vertex. So we just pick this vertex here from the master layout, right? Everything we're doing is from the master layout. So that gives us the headstock. And uh, then what we could do is we could re basically rinse and repeat. So select that face of the, the headstock. Let's go to uh, view sketches. We're going to just turn off all those sketches. Select that face, begin a sketch, view sketches, turn them all back on again. And then we could take one, two, three, four holes here, convert entities, S key extrude cut, right mouse button through all, right mouse button. So that creates the holes in that headstock. And so uh, now we could open up that neck and let's assign a material here. Make this out of a wood and we'll just make it out of a maple. Okay, that looks good. And uh, now you can see that we've got our headstock main and we've got our headstock tuning holes, tuning peg holes, and save. And we'll do check in active document. So this is going to go into our same, same project here. Go that in at revision one. So now we have a version one of this headstock. 
uh, oh, what were they of the neck, the maple neck. So now we return to the uh, overall kind of view of this maple neck. And uh, it looks like there's one element of the maple neck that we haven't really captured yet. And that's kind of what's going on down here at the bottom with this, this uh, uh, curved region down at the bottom of it. So let's go back to our main layout here. Uh, in our main layout, we can go to our top view. We can hide some of those pictures that we, we really don't need to see anymore. So we'll hide that. We'll hide the picture of the headstock only. We don't really need to see that anymore. I must have added a reference into that sketch. Let's e edit that sketch. What do I have in there? Display delete. There's no relations in that thing. I can't agree. Oh, because the headstock plane. Right. Okay. So that one's going to be dependent on the headstock plane, which is dependent on the neck. Okay. So I can't, unfortunately, I can't add that picture up to the top. But that's okay. I'll still hide it. And uh, then what I'm going to do is on the top plane, begin a sketch and then tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. And I'm going to bring in the neck from the bottom view. And this way we can properly capture what's going on at the bottom of the neck with that that curve that we're seeing at the bottom of the neck. So let's see what we can do to size this. That's going to be the challenge is getting it sized correctly. It's not going to be exactly in line with that. I'm trying to think where I've got a reference that I can relate this to. I think I'm going to have to relate it to the image that I took from the top of the neck. So let's show that image, the neck uh, picture, neck, top only. Let's show that. And then in the current picture that we're working on, let's do full image transparency and then see what we can do about getting those two aligned. It's hard not to get distracted by the, uh, <laughs> it's hard not to get distracted by the sketch geometry that we're seeing as well. Man, I, I shouldn't have clipped this image at the, at the fretboard. Wait, did I clip that off? No, I didn't. Okay. Why does it look so short compared to... Yeah, it looks so short compared to the... Uh, the other image. But... I mean, it's right. So that goes right there. Let's get that width to be the same. See, this is another one of these spots where we just have to use our caliper uh, and make sure that we get, you know, that the the true dimension is coming from the caliper, not from the image necessarily. And what I'm talking about specifically is the gap uh, between the bottom of the fretboard and the uh, maple neck itself. So, what is this gap here? This is the question that I'm trying to determine right now. Looks like about 300 thou, really like 0 0.295. So let's, you know, in SolidWorks, let's try to capture that same distance so that, you know, we're, we're using this lower picture for the capturing of that arc, but the, uh, the distance to that lower picture is captured properly from that upper layout. In fact, I'm just going to use that upper layout as the... See the neck from the side rails. I want this one. Let's take that 0 0.295 and then use that to give us a, a reference point here. Okay. It's hard to see which picture is which. really like that that's where that pocket should be it should be 0 0.0295 off from the bottom of that fretboard so you know it looks different here um and the main it looks different as we talked about before because of perspective the angle at which i took the picture etc but uh the that bottom curve should still be pretty valid so i think i'm okay with the uh, you know, with that bottom curve uh, that, I, that I captured from this. And so now this means that I can go back to this layout, uh, the picture of the 
uh, master base layout, and I can use this picture from the underside of the neck to finish defining that geometry. So for the base body, particularly in that pocket, we want to make sure that we get that defined relative to the neck, the neck geometry, and this uh, this new curve that I've created here. So I guess really what I should probably be doing is this one, the neck uh, layout for side angles. It's probably in this one that I should really be capturing this information. So we're going to hide this earlier sketch uh, because we're going to be creating our own geometry here. Something like this. We'll take these points and make them horizontal. We'll take this and make it construction. And we'll take this and make it tangent. We'll take this uh, center point, make sure it's on here. And we will add a couple of more arcs to this thing. And they're going to end up going tangent into here. I'll just mirror that across when I'm done. Make that a little bit tighter, kind of match that 0 0.2 that we saw up top. Uh, tangent, tangent, that looks pretty good. We'll give this uh, dimension to this location just to fully lock it down. And then we can finish up by just mirroring that across. Do I have a center line there? Yeah. Okay. And then this is our fretboards. This is like our neck and our fretboard all kind of in one sketch. Okay. I like that. I think I'm good with that. Let's go back to our uh, assembly and let's edit that neck in the assembly. Okay, that's what we're currently doing. And then what we could do is we could make a new plane for the neck because uh, that new plane needs to be kind of up above where the, the top plane normally is. So we could hold control, select the top plane, hold control, drag it up, and then we could pick this point here. That's the uh, correct plane for the uh, neck. So we'll call this neck topmost plane. And then once we have that neck there uh, on that topmost plane, we can begin a sketch and we can take all this geometry that we just were working on. So like this arc, arc, arc. Uh, this is why it's nice when you have like a nice closed contour because you can just do a, a convert entities for everything. And this guy here, and we can do a convert entities Kind of having second thoughts about how I dropped that line in here. I almost think that this should be, instead of this being coincident here, it should be coincident up here. I know it's subtle, but we're using that as our like pivot point as opposed to just having a straight section there. I think that that makes more sense. Okay, I like that. And now that we've got that geometry, we can extrude. And this is going to come down to this point down here. And it's going to be a selected contour, not a thin feature. And it'll be this contour here. Now for this one, what I'm going to do is not merge the results. Not merge the results on this one. And the reason why I'm going to not merge the results on this one is because uh, when we get back together next week, we're going to blend these two regions together. So just as a, a little bit of a sneak preview of what that might look like, whoops, try that again. I always forget that when you do an extrusion and... Uh, Really what I should do is I should just chop that thing up, but I always forget that uh, when I when you do an extrusion and you have like thin feature elements, you uh, you run into this weird like dance sometimes where you have to go select the contours and then select the contour, and then you have to also uncheck thin feature, but you can't uncheck thin feature first. You have to do it second, and always I always forget about it. Okay, and that's going to go up to vertex, and that's going to be this vertex here. Okay, and then, whoops, forgot to not merge the results, but 
edit feature and we're going to say don't merge the results there okay so now now we've got you know this shape here which um like i said when we come back next week we're going to take this shape here and we're going to do something cool like add a, a curve to the bottom of it let's just say this is again this is just for just for the sake of sneak preview um so we might do something like this i know this isn't exactly how you would do it but just you know uh so then we could do like extrude cut through all both directions and just this body and uh, flip the direction that we're cutting it okay so there you go there's the the neck part of it and then here's the headstock part of it and so similarly we'll kind of like clean up this headstock part of it so we'll do something like let's just say we did it with a, a curve here just because it looks cool when you do this so then we could do extrude cut uh, through all and we could say that this is going to be flip this side and now we're setting ourselves up to get in here and do some kind of a loft so when we go to do a loft here we could loft from this body down to this body like so and then we could do things like um, start end constraints with tangency and start end constraint with tangency and then we can just dial down this tangency until it can be solved. Tangency is too high right now to solve. So let's see here. It doesn't like, which one doesn't it like? Well, it doesn't like a couple of things here. It doesn't like the fact that I've got multiple, uh, uh, I've, I got an inconsistent number of edges in this. It doesn't like that. It also doesn't like, Let's see, it doesn't like the tangency to that other end. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it doesn't like the tangency to this end. That's interesting. But that's kind of the gist of how you might do it uh, to get that blend in there. And that's what we're going to try to do uh, next week so that we end up with something like that, which kind of looks like what the original thing looked like. I mean, again, da obviously down here, we got to clean up this area. I'm just looking, uh, I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a, a taste, a little bit of a preview here of what we're going to end up doing, uh, which I think, you know, is going to work out great. And if we go back to our assembly now, we can see that our assembly has our uh, multiple components together. I mean, the one last thing that I think I want to do here uh, before I before I close out for the day on this session is uh, uh, I want to make sure that this pocket is related to the maple neck part. So I go back here to open, uh, we'll go to a top view here, and then let's show the uh, layout of the main body. So we'll show that. And then here is the layout for the neck. So we want the main body to be underneath that. And then what we want to do is we want to take this pocket that we, that we kind of drew in here, we just kind of eyeballed it in here, and we want to create a relationship to the main, uh, uh, to the neck. So let's see here. So we're going to just add in a dimension here. Now, I, I'm always very careful about how my references occur. So I'm going to create this relationship to something in the tree instead of creating it to the graphics area. So I don't inadvertently uh, snap to something that I didn't that I didn't mean to because I'm not going to be able to easily reorder. Uh, although, you know, it's kind of moot because I'm going to end up I'm intentionally creating a relationship here. But see, I'm going to make this parallel and then I'm just going to offset it by, you know, like five thou. So just like a, a 5 thou clearance to go into this pocket. Um, and then for these, I'll do the same thing. Uh, this is going to be concentric. And this is going to be concentric. And this is going to be concentric. And then this, I'll do the exact same thing on this side. So this guy and this guy are going to be parallel. And that 5,000 just carried right through. So it's basically like doing an offset entities command. But what I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to ensure that if I make a change to the neck, if I decide to make the neck flare out a little bit more aggressively or, or uh, a little bit less aggressively, well, that pocket is going to always update automatically and I'm going to be good to go. So now if we look at this, now we can actually, if you get it just the right angle, you can actually kind of see that 5,000 clearance. But the point is that it sits in there nice and snug. Uh, oh, wait, wait, I didn't. I didn't cut that five thou in there yet. Duh. All right, let's do that too. We're doing one last thing, guys, before we end the day. Just because I want to. Yikes. 
It's like go go gadget arms, right? Okay, here we go. One last thing. It's always one last thing. So this is 1.066 as far as uh, what that that cut length or uh, cut offset from surface needs to be 1.066. So let's do it here. We're gonna go uh, show this guy. Select a face, begin a sketch, orient our view. We're gonna take this geometry here, right mouse button, select chain, uh, convert. And we're gonna do, oh, I didn't include that geometry in the, uh, well, I guess I'll do it twice. So we're gonna do, I'm not editing the part, forgot to go into edit part mode. Edit that part first. SolidWorks even gave me a warning and I was like, I don't care, ignore your warning. Select chain, convert entities, extruded boss, double click this face to go up to surface. There we go. That gives us the extra geometry on the base. Uh, select a face, begin a sketch, right mouse button, select chain, convert entities, S key convert entities, extrude a cut. And then this one is going to be offset from surface. And that offset distance is going to be, what did I say it was? 1.066. 1.066 there we go and that gives us that nice pocket there uh that the neck will end up sitting in the neck looks like it's just floating right now which it is because of the uh uh because of that uh approximation of the rear rounding of the neck that i had put on it but yeah that's what we want we want that pocket to be right there always related back to the neck so if the neck changes that pocket will change as well and man i'm so i wish i could just work on this thing all day today i would just i would love to just get in and start making those beveled chamfers and everything but you know all good things come in time we can i think we can handle waiting for it right i think we'll be okay so and also i do i also do another technique too where uh when we're done with this thing, we're actually going to make this out of the, the wood. We'll make this out of some kind of a wood, uh, an ash wood or a maple or something. And then we'll do a surface offset uh, to simulate the paint coat. So we will have this thing out of wood because, you know, this section here is wood. This is wood. This is wood. And then the regions that are painted, we'll do a surface offset. And then we'll use that surface offset to kind of emulate the paint. So I think that'll be pretty cool. All right. So we'll save this. Go back to our main assembly with all of our parts and our layout. Let's do a check-in active document. That's gonna check in everything that we've been working on. You notice that it's all uh, being indexed here to the different levels. So when different versions of these files go in, they get indexed to the different levels so that at any point we can go back and we can check out one of those earlier levels. So we can say check-in, check everything into this project. And I think we're pretty good. That was a pretty good session. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, be sure to like the live stream. Uh, the likes are always very much appreciated. They go a long way towards helping the algorithm. And uh, as always, I had fun time hanging out with you guys on this one. I am very excited to see how far we got with this already. I'm very excited to see uh, how far we end up going with it. But it's already looking, you know, like a bass guitar. And we're just going to keep refining, refining, refining. We'll do some some cool uh, stuff with rendering. We'll do some cool stuff with sweeping. We'll get the strings in there. The strings are going to be fun. We'll do some cool stuff with assemblies and sub-assemblies and gear gear ratios. We'll pop the rear cover off of one of these so that we can actually see the, the gearing that's going on inside of this thing. And, you know, each one of these things is going to be its own uh, kind of little assembly. So, you know, we'll get in there and we'll, we'll do some cool stuff with gears and gear ratios and stuff like that, um, gear mates. So we got lots of good stuff to get into in this project. I'm excited to keep going with it. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And I want to thank you as always for joining me today. And I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to try and do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. And we'll see how far we get with this thing. All right, guys, you're amazing. Take it easy.